Hello, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex technical analysis. If you're new, welcome, and if you are returning, welcome back. If you are finding my weekly videos useful, um, I'm very glad, and um, let me know if they are in the uh, comment section below if there's anything you want me to cover that I haven't covered already. Um, and uh, I will attempt to uh, get back to you as soon as possible. Also, the pairs um, that I'm going to be analyzing are time stamped in the description box below if you're watching this on YouTube, so you can skip to your favorite pairs. And uh, yeah, we'll start off from the fundamentals, as fundamentals and sentiment is really what drives the market and how we determine value. Um, and bargains in the um, in the market and uh, it gives us our north star really our directional bias on why we should be buying uh, one currency over another so uh, trading economics great website is what I use so for the week ahead we have important data releases includes US consumer and producer prices why is that important um, because inflation US inflation and uh, the, the Federal Reserve and I guess Donald Trump as well uh, want to get to, and all central banks really want to get to that 2% target. The US is at 1.9 at the moment, so it's uh, it's okay, but they want to basically get to that 2% target or there or thereabouts. And uh, consumer prices are, um, and producer prices are um, an indication of inflation. So uh, trade balance, always a good one, GDP and jolts job openings, UK first quarter GDP, growth is gonna be decent as well, potential mover, uh, foreign trade and industrial output, Germany factory orders and trade balance again, Germany being the powerhouse for Europe, if Germany um, you know, uh, aren't producing and their trade balance is low, then it sets really the tone for the rest of Europe. Again, China inflation, um, that would be um, a risk on, risk off. Uh, play the foreign trade and uh, services, PMI, and Japan, consumer morale. Central bank decisions in Australia, um, that's going to be a mover as well. So central bank decisions, meaning whether they're going to be hike, holding, or cutting. Um, they, they, are, they have been dovish, to be fair. So um, potential, don't know whether they'll be cutting this one but within this year the expectation is for Australia to start to look to cut interest rates also New Zealand Thailand Malaysia Philippines Brazil we don't trade those but New Zealand as well have been fairly dovish um, are in the spotlight as well as US China trade talks and again that would be more risk sentiment and if you want to know about fundamentals and risk sentiment the link in it is in the description box below which is the fundamental analysis course, absolutely free. Click on there and uh, I show you everything you need to really know about fundamental and sentiment analysis, so why fundamentals analysis, gross domestic product, inflation and interest rates, the relationships between them, and uh, really how to determine value um, on a price chart when it comes to currencies. And uh, if you click on the uh, fundamental analysis spreadsheet, it will take you to this spreadsheet, which is just a, a general uh, view of what I am on each currency, so bullish on the dollar. And for those of you if you've been following me for a while, you know, uh, basically just been buying the dollar for for ages. Uh, neutral bearish on the euro, so you know you should be really be selling uh, or, or buying uh, the dollar over the euro on the euro dollar currency pair. You know that's a, a short, um, so you'll be looking at supply zones. And again, this isn't financial advice. This is just my opinion. Do um, derive this from uh, my fundamental analysis and sent. Well, this isn't necessarily sentiment. This is more just fundamental analysis um, uh, bias on the currency pairs, and then you can choose what currencies you want to be buying or selling. So, getting into the uh, the technicals now, and we start off every week as we always do on the Dow Jones Dollar Index. Dow Jones Dollar Index from last week, we came up into this supply zone and I was uh, expecting probably prices to 
uh, sell off a little bit and this was probably due to the anticipation with FOMC this week and also you had uh, non-farms which uh, both came out um, FOMC was pretty much uh, neutral um, in, in the Federal Reserve stance and the uh, non-farms came out actually much better than expected I think GDP also came out quite good for the for the dollar um, average hourly earnings which is again a measure of inflation uh, was quite was 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 okay came out as I think a 0.2 so what you had this week was a trail off then you had a move up right into um, you know the FOMC as well as um, you know other um, non-farm reports prices of pullback now this for me is an opportunity to buy the dollar um, I'm not concerned with potential you know sells or anything like that and selling the dollar um, compared to every other major economy and every other currency that we trade the dollar is really uh, the strongest if you compare GDP inflation and interest rates so they're way ahead of everybody else so look for prices as you know these kind of pullbacks not as um, a way to say, oh, well, you know, it's good news, so, and, and the fundamentals don't work. Just look at it as value. You're buying the currency uh, um, when you compare it to everything else for cheaper. And really, how do we buy? You know, cheap prices have to pull back at some point. So, um, you know, areas I wouldn't be buying on the, necessarily the dollar, um, dollar index, but I'll be looking at the dollar index once it starts to turn up as an overall gauge of dollar strength and then look for some uh, some uh, some buying opportunities on any of the dollar crosses so as we're down into this demand zone uh, we could be looking for some potential strength this week and if not then when prices come down here then um, we can get some potential strength then we'd be buying any of the dollar uh, crosses so um, looking at the an update and I guess the charts what do we have here? I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that demand zone there for now. Nothing really much has changed. Again, prices came back up into this you know supply zone. Um, so yeah, I think everything is pretty much as uh, as it was last week. Any changes? I'll uh, be updating them on the uh, Trading View uh, profile. But for now, I think that's that's okay for this week. If prices do come down to you know past this area then we'd be looking for again some buys and we have some confluence here we've got diagonal support we've also got a level of demand which is value proven value proof of value as I describe it um, and uh, yeah pretty decent right here I guess you've also got if you want to put in a bit of a level not necessarily the clearest level but there is something you know right there as well we've got resistance resistance a uh, bit of resistance here again and some support around here so lots of confluence in that area uh, so looking for any kind of buy trades for the dollar from a fundamental perspective moving on to the dollar yen and so last week we did have a bit of a sell-off and I was looking at buy trades in here was predicting buys um, in this level we did get you know buying opportunity um, also we didn't get a buying opportunity prices did react to that demand zone now we're back in which is brilliant and I'll you know, I'll be looking for some buying opportunities now um, this week on the dollar yen so now we're just looking for prices to really kind of turn up anywhere from now to um, uh, to maybe at some point this week um, risk is seems to be on the stock market is making you know higher highs and uh, if risk is on then the Japanese yen doesn't really benefit in a risk on environment the dollar would um, but if you are looking to take advantage of any kind of risk off sentiment that does come into the market and then you'd be looking at supply zones so here are your supply zones I'm gonna move this one here you've got that as a supply zone you've got another one here you've got a bit of a uh, cluster of, of supplies we've got lower highs and lower lows like this yeah there 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 actually 
initially in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that one there because we haven't made lower lows yet we haven't passed this low we haven't really gone past this low so those are the two uh, supply zones that we're looking for and then what you would do is within that wider zone of supplies look for um, other confluences like support and resistance diagonal support and resistance etc right and dynamic as well um, so moving that across this looks like a great zone to get long in um, and I will be looking for long trades if I see obviously the right type of uh, uh, price action and candlestick formations uh, again it's not a recommendation to buy or sell definitely do you know your research but um, from a fundamental perspective the dollar is a buy uh, moving on to the dollar Swiss and the dollar Swiss again we was looking for pullbacks this week and uh, again with FOMC we did come back into this demand zone and we did get there were some buying opportunities on the lower time frame again just because I trade the uh, I trade the higher time frames like the four hours the risk reward really wasn't there for me so I kind of sat out on the uh, on that trade and I'll really explain right where you have this large bullish candle but from a risk reward perspective that was really the risk reward even if taken up to the absolute highs a one to one or near enough is not enough for me to get involved in that type of trade so what I'll be doing is looking for again some sort of pullback into a level before looking at any kind of long trades um, and hopefully we can get you know some uh, smaller um, uh, bullish candles which makes the risk reward a lot better so for example if that's potentially the risk reward you know that's uh, that's a much better risk reward and we don't have to necessarily trade it up to the highest to make a two to one so um, <clears throat> if you're looking at sells at the moment you do have a bit of supply right there um, coming into the market so um, if this doesn't work out if this level doesn't work out the next really level you'd be looking at buying the dollar would be anywhere around here or if prices do create some sort of move where it goes like that and then yeah move higher creating higher highs higher lows and then you'd wait for a pullback into <clears throat> that kind of demand zone so um that's that for the dollar swiss looking at the dollar cad and the dollar cad this week um cad is strengthened when it comes to uh um uh overall uh yeah cad strength really uh, compared to everything else um there was a buying opportunity again prices came down into the demand zone flew up so anybody I, I was saying to the to the uh, to the group uh, that I mentor that um, I can't believe I missed this uh, this trade there was a nice uh, entry on the lower time frames around here but no matter we, you know we can't get them all and um, right now what we're looking at is dollar CAD it's probably a move down into a fresher level of demand before looking at getting long um, what you do have is some supply at the moment as you have lower highs lower lows being made so you've got there pullback and then a new low so that becomes a level of supply and uh, yeah decent level but um, again on this pair I'd be looking to buy the dollar what you want to do is take a look at um, oil as well if oil is 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 is, um, is going higher then that adds to a potential Canadian dollar um, you know sell at supply but from a fundamental position you know the dollar is really the, the, the better uh, the better buy um, what else have we got the New Zealand dollar uh, US dollar and from 
last week we ended up coming into this uh, supply zone and again opportunities to get short this area here um, the New Zealand dollar has weakened a little bit but it's still probably maybe one of the uh, top four currencies um, but decent short from that level if you manage to get in on that well done so uh, you know here was again dollar short um, nothing's really changed to be fair um, on this currency pair I guess what you could have done as well is added um, the uh, diagonal resistance right there that would have added the confluence of that you know trade um, but right now what we're looking for is what you're looking for is a move either up into this zone, a second touch of a, uh, of a supply zone is okay, um, but I'd probably be looking for here to really get, you know, to get short. Again, looking at this area, this didn't really represent decent, um, for me anyway, in the time frame that I trade, um, a good enough risk reward to the downside. Um, but I'd be looking at this level here as a level to get short on the uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar. If you're looking to buy right now, um, again, decent buy trades potentially right now. If you think that the dollar, US dollar is going to get weaker against the New Zealand dollar, or the New Zealand dollar is going to strengthen. So moving on to the pound dollar and the pound this week, it's made a bit of a run. Uh, and we did have prices kind of break through that supply zone there. Would have caught probably a lot of traders out. Um, this area level was quite obvious. A lot of traders were looking at short trades here because what does what happens is support becomes resistance. There was a bit of hidden um, supply here, and I was looking to get short here, but again with the right kind of uh, um, price action. <clears throat> We ended up waiting, didn't take this trade, the dollar was strengthening, and now we're really up into this zone here. Um, you're trading, again, even though the dollar is the uh, the stronger currency, um, I would say uh, the dollar, the pound, sorry, has uh, some, uh, some positive sentiment around it, but now is probably a decent short or just above that level. You know, the 132 level, I would say, is decent. Not necessarily the best pair to trade um, as you're trading, but it's strength against strength. You want to really be trading strength against weakness. So, you know, pairs like the dollar, uh, dollar yen, dollar Swiss are probably the better tr uh, pairs to trade from a fundamental perspective. But um, uh, we've had this move higher, bit of a pullback move higher. Um, so anywhere around these levels, if we're looking at it from a value perspective, and let's go to pound dollar, if you're looking at this being the overall range from the high to the low, and those of you who are taking a course will know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're looking to buy the dollar, then what you're looking at is this, everything above 50% is gonna be cheap. So this is fair value between an expensive and a cheap level. So you're looking at now levels here this probably could coincide with some sort of 61.8 percent Fibonacci etc um, but the higher you go is the better value you're buying the dollar for so um, anywhere up here looking for shorts we can also clear some of this off as well clear that off clear that supply and we are into this supply zone here we've also created a nice demand zone nice demand zone there and so what you also have is if prices do start to pull back and you want to be a buyer at a pound that is a decent decent level um, for many reasons and one main reason is that um, again I spoke, spoke about this in the group is uh, is the capture pain relief this is a this is a very good capture pain relief uh, uh, trade right here but um, just if you want to be buying a pound if you're gonna be buying a pound there from a from a uh, uh, dollar perspective again we'll be looking at probably looking at shorts anywhere around here looking to take advantage potentially of some uh, dollar strength and some pound weakness doesn't mean we are 
100% going to get into it. We have to obviously look at um, you know what price does at certain levels. Um, but uh, yeah, decent shorts coming in, um, but fundamentally not necessarily the greatest. Euro dollar, let's look at the euro dollar. And again, all week we were looking at this trade, looking at short trades here. The analysis was correct. Analysis was definitely correct on this one. All right, we've got a nice uh, supply zone there. Proof of value prices come back up into this zone and then get short. The only problem was is uh, um, non-farms didn't allow us to get in. I did a video this week, but I will be looking at getting in short at this level if prices return to here. Again, if you're in the uh, Trading 180 group, you'll know exactly why. And in fact, um, there is a video on YouTube I released, I think on the Wednesday, explaining why on the lower time frame, the CPR, this is a nice CPR zone. So I'll be getting, looking to get um, short around here. And again, providing the right type of price action. I'm not gonna just blindly um, you know, sell here. I know a lot of traders do use pending orders, but we want to see some uh, some supply come into the market on an intraday time frame. Um, if you are looking to buy, then this was a decent demand zone. Again, prices came down in, and uh, this was your buy trade. If this level doesn't work out, it's okay. We can buy the dollar for cheaper to the uh, to the downside. And um, there was a, a comment on YouTube, matter of fact, a, 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 by a gentleman by the name of Howard Hill, who was uh, talking about in, in a video with a special um, invite only supply and demand forex webinar. And he said, um, just a suggestion to consider for clarity when talking about shorting euro dollar, uh, rather say, short the euro from the supply zone because it's overvalued in that area. Now, um, when it comes to buying currencies and supply and demand, what you should be really thinking about is, um, is, is, is value and bargains and cheap prices. We tend to go to, you know, we tend to shop. When we shop and do bargains, it's easier for us to look for what something is undervalued or a bargain. That's what we're drawn to when we go into Amazon. If you're in, you know, you go to you know supermarket, we're looking at bargains, right? That's the reason why we buy. We tend to not look at things as overvalued, um, you know, or, or expensive. I mean, we do obviously look at things as, as expensive, but what we should be doing from a supply and demand perspective is more look for bargains, right? I'm not going to um, short the euro because of something is overvalued. I don't know whether something is overvalued or not, but I do. What I do is easier, and what I do know is that the dollar is definitely a bargain at certain prices, yeah. And I get this is definitely maybe confusing to a few of you, right? But you need to understand what the base currency is and the quote currency, right? So from from a base currency perspective and the quote currency, what I mean by that is, you know, you've got, oh, sorry. You've got, and what I'll do, matter of fact, rather than drawing it on here, I can just go back to the chart, right? For the Euro dollar, yeah? Base currency is the Euro, the quote currency is the dollar, yeah? So when we're talking about buying the dollar, you have to buy the quote currency, which means, um, you know, when you're pressing uh, when you want to buy the dollar against the euro, you have to press sell yeah, on your broker. Yeah, So I know it's hard for traders to get their head around, but what you have to do is look at buying the quote currency and buying the quote currency is a short trade and shorting and short orders are supply. Yeah, That's the way to look at it rather than looking at something as the euro being overvalued. Yeah, It's the dollar is a bargain at this area. Um, so hopefully that clarifies, um, you know, that for any of you who did have that question. So, uh, yeah, continuing on with the analysis, really what we're doing is, um, you know, buying the dollar for cheaper up here. Yeah. First area is going to be here. If that doesn't work out, then we're going to be buying the dollar up here. Um, if you're buying the euro, then you'll be buying 
the euro at demand zones. Um, yes, so moving on to the euro yen. Euro yen, this, I really wanted to actually get short on this from up here, but we just didn't get the opportunity and prices have really fallen away. And the reason why I'm getting short on this is uh, on the euro yen is because um, there's going to be some risk, a lot of risk sentiment coming into the market. Why do I say that? Is because you've got the European elections coming up. You've still got Brexit kind of hanging over Europe. Um, there are talks of the um, you, um, the dollar and Trump and Euro trade negotiations as well. So Europe is in a bit of uh, in, in a bit of upcoming uh, uh, uncertainty, a lot of uncertainty around around Europe at the moment, and you're starting to see that play out in the markets. Again, the guys will know um, that I was calling for this move up, the move down from a few weeks back. It just didn't get the uh, the zone that I wanted, the one two seven um, and thereabouts number, and prices have really kind of gone on their way. But I can see. Um, as long as again Europe remains um, in this uh, again the European elections, trade negotiations with America, and also the fact that they are not doing too well um, GDP-wise, uh, the euro is probably the short at the moment. So again, going to the charts, and this is really just a sentiment play. You know, this is risk off. You buy the yen against the euro. Um, so what we have now is uh, if prices do create a lower low, meaning that they break below that low, then, and I say break below, but just uh, an, a bearish candle below that low, then that would be a level of supply there. But until that happens, yes, there is supply, but it's not necessarily the strongest level of supply from a daily perspective. So what we'd be looking for is prices to really kind of come up to here and then look for any kind of shorting opportunities. And again, risk would have to be off for me to uh, to look for shorting trades here. If there is, you know, uh, um, things get sorted out in Europe um, and uh, everything is, is lovely, you know, in Germany and uh, the European elections, then the Euro is probably a buy. And I would say more so if you could get down to this wider demand zone, especially if we get down to this this confluence area of uh, and let me adjust that area matter of fact let me just put it adjust this the supply demand sorry the support and resistance zone probably you're looking at something more like that now so if you get moved down into this area here it has been touched several times so probably just underneath that would be the better area um, and I'll adjust this as we go forward as well but um, those are the areas to really to buy, but I'm looking at probably sell trades as we go into, um, uh, you know, as we come into the European elections. Um, next is the Aussie dollar. And the Aussie dollar um, really hasn't gone anywhere this week. Australian uh, dollar is weak, again, dovish tone the central bank the dollar the US dollar being the stronger out of the two so um, this week we only really had a um, bit of a move down a bit of a retracement from this uh, level in this level of demand where you've got you know uh, support as well acting but I probably expect this level to really kind of break um, let's go to the charts So what I'm expecting is if prices start to break down, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this demand zone probably just around there. It's not necessarily how I do draw demand zones, but just for a bit of clarity. Um, if price starts to move down, then you're looking at a move back into that area as that would create supply. And then you'd be looking at also a move or a, that would also create that supply zone as well. Yeah, and you're looking for shorts right there, but for now, um, uh, not yet, you know, not yet. This is a level of supply, but we need to see probably a bearish candle close before prices really, um, or bearish candle wick at least, before we can, can kind of consider this 
area, this area here is a strong area of supply. If we don't get that, then this will be where, you know, the, uh, the shorts, or we could create a level where we get a move like this. And then what you'd be doing is looking at prices to come back to either this area here or that area there. So, uh, lastly, moving on to the Aussie yen. In the Aussie yen this week, um, you know, we've had prices kind of spike up. I don't know why that spike was there. I'm not too sure why that spike was there, matter of fact. Maybe it's just Oanda's uh, um, uh, feed. Don't remember seeing this spike up earlier, but yeah. Um, Again, uh, Australia being a bit weak at the moment, um, we have, um, you know, the, the yen strength again risk probably potentially coming to an uh, into the off stage, um, or it could just literally be just some Australian dollar weakness. If we do get some uh, some Australian dollar positivity, I would say this seventy seven fifty seventy seven round number is where we want to look to be buyers. So. The yen again risk on. <clears throat> We're looking at this area here before looking at buy trades. Um, if we're looking at sell trades, then I'd have to probably draw it from there to there. Um, it's going to be where, actually, matter of fact, that whole area as that's hidden supply, uh, that whole area, wide area. But then what we would also do within that wide area is look for areas of support and resistance so what you really want to be doing is probably looking at those areas there as <clears throat> areas to potentially get short if you're looking at short trades and taking advantage of any kind of risk off sentiment let's just move this up a little bit yeah that's decent yeah so those are the areas to potentially get short if risk is on then you're looking at this area 77.5 to 77 uh, or thereabouts to look for uh, you know any kind of long trades so uh, that brings a conclusion to this week I hope you enjoyed it please don't forget to like subscribe share comment again your feedback is uh, is very welcome I know a few of you guys wanted me to add some extra pairs on here. Um, I won't be adding anything outside of Forex. Yeah, So if you're asking me about gold, about oil, about stock market, um, I specifically deal with um, Forex. Um, so uh, I won't be adding those. And uh, I may consider adding maybe a couple of other pairs if you know the demand is there to do so. So um, yeah. I hope you have a great trading week and uh, again any feedback please leave it in the uh, comment section below um, and uh, manage your risk go for more than you risk and remember that if you're going for two to one at the minimum you have to have a 35% win rate in order to just break even right so can you be right more than 35% of the time going at two to ones at a three to one to break even and not lose money on your on your uh, on your on your account you only need a win percentage of 25% so if every trade you're going for three times the amount then um, to break even you only need to win 25% of the time manage your risk go for more than you than you risk and uh, um, also don't over leverage this is not a, uh, a, a a sprint you know lambos and and all that kind of stuff you know it's it's um don't get drawn into that just manage your risk slowly you know and then you can start to scale so uh, just a bit of advice there and uh, again if you have any questions let me know so take care and have a great trading week